Arnor. Last time we looked at them, we explored their real history before digging deeper to fill in the gaps in order to design, build, and paint an army representing the full scope of what this old kingdom could be. And while we still have a lot to paint, there's something else missing, as while we have a few captains, we have no true leaders. We need kings. The most famous king of Arnor was Arvidui, which meant last king in Sindarin, as it was foretold that he would be the last king. And so he was for a long time. However, Arvidui was not in truth the king of Arnor, but only of Arthedain, as there are numerous kings across the history of all three kingdoms, and so today we will be building not one, not two, but three kings of Arnor, one for each of its splintered kingdoms. Arthedain, Cardolan, and Rudor. So let's start with Rudor, as we've been here a couple of times now. For a deeper dive into this kingdom, take a look at my other videos on them, as today we'll be taking all of that and focusing it onto one miniature who encapsulates the land. Rudor is rough, wild, and proud, with a strong but disjointed army, and so we don't need to really worry too much about the king matching our troops exactly. As the army developed, they really started to take on a bit of a Gaulish or Celtish vibe to me, and so in a looking for a model for the king, I focused there and found the perfect one. Warlord Games sells a set of Gaul heroes in their SPQR line, which includes this boy. Versindorix. Versindorix? Versindorix. As soon as I saw this model, I was hooked, as it just had so much presence, and still has an air of nobility despite looking thoroughly wild. So we have the perfect starting point for Rudor, but first we needed a quick scrub to remove any lingering release agent you sometimes get on resin miniatures. I then started by ditching his shield and removing a few bits including his sword hand and the top of his helmet. This helmet is gorgeous and will be a fantastic bit to have, but just felt a bit too over the top for what I was going for here. I then took the top of a Frostgrave soldier's helmet and replaced his, as well as an axe from the Oathmark Orcs, which I put in his left hand by drilling out a hole with my pin vise. Then we get to the fun bit. I gave Rudor the shards of Narsal as their rallying symbol, and so naturally the king should have the shards of Narsil. So I grabbed one of the old Aragorn models I knew I had a spare copy of, and cut off his hand. Then I broke his blade and glued it into its new place. And with just those little touches, I'm really happy with this guy, and he's ready to get painted up. I started with a simple Xenophil highlight of black and white, before going in and applying base colors to the figure sticking to simple browns and greys to fit him into the crowd. But I was stuck for a while regarding how to paint his cape. The obvious choice was red, as that's the spot color for the army, but I felt like that would be a bit too much, and the brown or grey felt too boring. Then it hit me. Flag cape. So I quartered the cape in red and white and got ready to move forward. I didn't use too many washes, and really only applied these to select areas like the fur around his belt, the wraps around his hands and boots, the medals, and the skin. As for highlights, I highlighted all the medals with a bit of bright silver, while using an off-white for all the rest, mixing more and more in to lighten everything up while keeping all the disparate elements unified. The only bits I didn't highlight using this was the white of the cape, which I used white for, but I guess that should have been obvious. Then, once we'd painted the eyes by applying black into the recesses and adding two dots of white to each, which is the correct way to paint eyes by the way, we went back to the cape as it wouldn't be a flag without the shards. So I roughly sketched out the general shape of Narsil with black before once again mixing more off-white into the black in order to highlight it up. Then I added a little bit of black all the way around to make it pop, while doing the same with some select recess shading around the rest of the model. And with that, our wild king is done, and he looks just how I wanted him to, 
perfectly encapsulating the spirit of Rudor while standing out from the crowd. And with that cape, I can totally picture him riding around in a 4x4 pickup truck with flags flying and a set of truck nuts hanging off the back. And going from the raw aggression of Rudor, let's move into the gentler hands of Cardolin. As we discussed before, Cardolin is a civilized place where people have accepted the golden age of the kingdom as past and simply lose themselves in the joy of the world, eschewing violence and celebrating nature. Of course, I needed just the right model to capture this vibe, and so I went looking for something simple, more of a spiritual leader than a political one, and I found just the right one here, in my pile of shame. This is one of the Christian monks from the Footsore Miniatures Baron's War line, a Kickstarter for which I backed last year. I just love how simple this miniature is, and the emotion it captures with him striding forward. But of course, we need to bring this guy out of the monastery and into Middle-earth, so I started by cutting off his hand and head. To replace his head, I took one of the hooded heads from the Wargames Atlantic Persian Warriors and replaced the top half with another helmet from the Frostgrave Soldiers, as it had this kind of Pope-like look to it, before adding a set of feathers to tie him into the army. While the head was a pretty good fit, in order to just fill in the gaps, I first added some green stuff, and smoothed it out as I stuck the head on and got it in the position I wanted. Next, he did need a sword of some kind, but considering his people were so pacifistic, I opted to keep it sheathed. I did this by taking a sword in a scabbard from the Wargames Atlantic Late Romans, and cutting off the handle and a bit of the crossguard, before fitting it under his left hand where it sat perfectly at his belt. But that still left us with a right hand that used to have another sword, so I grabbed this little... staff? Scepter? Stick? I don't know, but the things you see the Roman captains using, whatever that is. Finally, I was pretty happy with him here, but it still felt like something was missing, so I asked my patrons and they unanimously opted for a cape. So I took one from the Fireforge Games Teutonic Knights kit I picked up recently, and there, he was done. Thanks as always to my patrons for their continued support as your guidance and encouragement really helps me keep going. In particular, I wanted to thank Michelle, our newest member, as I'm just so happy to have you. As for the model, I'm pretty satisfied with him as I feel like he has a real priestly look about him rather than a classical king. So once he was primed up, we got painting. I really wanted to lead in the more spiritual side of this guy and ended up modeling him after the cult leaders from the movie Midsummer. So I started by painting his robes in white, and then the cape with its outside in green and inside in yellow. I actually forgot how I painted the yellow on my troops and didn't specify in the video, so I had to kind of eyeball it and reverse engineer. As for the rest, I stuck to simple muted colors of browns and grays, so as not to take away from the clean robes and the striking cape. I highlighted these all in the same way as last time by mixing in more and more off-white into the individual colors. The only different bits were once again the white cloth which I highlighted with white and the yellow that I added the intermediary color to. What little metals there were I painted the same way as before, and when it came to the feathers I went with red as it tied in with my other leader figures and added a nice contrast to the green. Once I got the eyes painted I still wasn't happy and decided to spice this guy up with some decorative patterns. I did this by adding yellow dots to the bottom and collar of the cape, as well as stripes to the robes, and with that little bit of extra done, he was perfect. This guy was actually the first one I painted, and he really set me off on the right foot, as I was really happy with how he turned out. All the details turned out nice and crisp, and the separation of color really adds to the model in my opinion. And while he stands out from his troops with the white, he still clearly belongs amongst them. And that brings us to our last model, the last king of Arnor, and the one that's still directly descended from Elendil, Arvidui. Which is a ridiculous name, by the way. Arthedain is the largest of the three kingdoms, well equipped, regimented, and steeped in their respect for their past, clinging to that bloodline to justify their subjugation of the other kingdoms. They were also the main defense against Angmar, as Rudor joined the forces of darkness, Carlin fell to the armies of evil, and what was left of Arnor joined forces under Arthedain's flag. And it was into this conflict that Arvidui became king. 
But he wasn't king for very long, as his father ruled up until his death, at which point Arvidui took the crown when he was not necessarily young at 100 something years old, but definitely middle age for Dunedain, and only ruled for 10 years as he did what he could to avoid the now inevitable destruction of Arnor and his own death. I was really drawn to the idea of him as a warrior king, living his whole life in a time of war and being thrown into leadership in the most dire of days. And as such, I wanted the model to be somewhat subdued and minimalistic, while still having an inspiring and heroic quality, which was when I found this fantastic model of a Christian monk from Gripping Beast. The post is so dynamic and so proud, but his armor is so simple which totally fit the feeling I wanted to get. But we can't have Arvidui being a priest, so we had to make some changes, starting by getting rid of his banner pole thing and scraping off the cross around his neck. From there, there really wasn't that much that I needed to do, besides replacing his right hand, which I did by using a piece from the Frostgrave soldier kit, and next adding a cape from the Fireforged Teutonic Knights, being sure to position it in the way that fit the pose. Then there was just a little bit of green stuffing needed to finish him off, mainly focusing on blending the cape into the body and covering up the religious bald spot on the back of his head. Like the building, I approached the painting in a very simple way, trying to match him to the rest of my Arthedanians. This meant base coating the metals in silver and gold and the cloth in simple tones of black, white, beige, and brown. The only extra spot of color I included was a yellow stripe along his tunic to push the kingly look. As for the cape, I decided to base it on the one Aragorn wore at the Black Gate in Return of the King, with the black outside and the dark, rich crimson inside. As a base coat for the interior, I mixed a dark red with some blue inks I had from Scale 75 to get a nice deep purple. The other nice thing about including yellow and red is that it brings on the colors of both other factions, subtly hinting at the idea that he considers himself the king of them all. Then, after a few select washes, I highlighted everything up by mixing in more and more off-white, until I was happy with how stark it was looking. I also spent a particularly long time focused on the face, as it's such a focal point on the model and really jumps out due to the dark colors of everything else. So I did my best to nail the eyes and layered up the skin, even going so far as to give him eyebrows. And while it did end up coming out a bit more harsh than I might have liked, I still think it's pretty striking. And for a last touch, I tried to do the alternate highlight look you see sometimes on the blade of the sword, highlighting the top of one side of the front and the bottom of the other while mirroring this on the back, and really pushing the shadows with more and more dark shades. Then I went to push the colors one last little bit with some recessed shading in the deepest areas between blocks of color, and then he was done. I feel like while he's absolutely simplest of the models here, the simplest conversion, the simplest painted, he's also my favorite, as I feel like he just has so much life and character to him that really sets him apart. However, because of that, I really do see him as that, a character, Arvidui. And part of the point of making multiple kings is to represent kingdoms at different periods and points, which I can't do if one of them is clearly Arvidui. So I cheated and made one more. This is a sculpt from Medbury Miniatures historical line, and I've loved it for a while now, even showing it off in another video, knowing I would want to bring him in here eventually. And so by simply replacing the helmet and painting him up in Arthedanian colors, he really hits the spot while being generic enough to represent any king of Arthedane, be it Arafant, Arvidui's father, or Amleth, the first king of Arthedane. And with these models finished, we're one big step forward in this Arnor army. And though there are a couple of obvious things missing, I think I need to paint some more troops up before I can get to them. And so, who of these is your favorite? And thank you all again for watching. Be sure to subscribe, comment, like, share, and most importantly, stay safe, as it's really wild out there right now.